All right, everybody, welcome back. Good afternoon. We are now into day three of the cornerback crop. We are in round four and beyond in terms of projection. There's nothing guaranteed. These guys could go a little bit earlier. Who knows? But um, just because they are not viewed in the same lens as the guys we've already talked about does not mean they're not interesting. And I find some of these guys very interesting, actually. So let's start with DJ James of Auburn, the Tigers, 23 years old, 6 feet tall, 175 pounds, 31 inch arms, 8 and 3 eighth hands. Um, ran his 40 at the combine. That's all he did, but it was a good uh, 40. One five ten yard split as well. Nice. Big boards, we got some fourth, and we've got a third. So his aggregate position is early fourth. Production over the last two years has been pretty good. Um, 75 tackles, four and a half for loss, three picks, 18 passes defensed, really good PFF grades. So DJ James has put together some nice years for the uh, Tigers. Um, enough to almost certainly be a draftable prospect in this draft. So... The thing that stands out with him, I guess, would be the fact that he's played outside and inside at Auburn. He's played um, both roles, and he showed he could do both. Doesn't mean he'll be able to do both in the NFL, but it certainly creates optimism that he could. He's got good ball skills. He has 18 passes defensed over the last two years is really good. He should be flexible across man and zone. I think he'll be able to do both. He has enough reactive athleticism to hang in man but he also has the awareness to hang in zone. He's a smart, high IQ player. You give him the chance to face the line of scrimmage, face the quarterback, and diagnose a play as it's happening, and he usually delivers. And he reacts to the information given to him really well. So if you put him in that zone situation, he's going to hold up, but I also think you're getting a capable man corner. And he's a good tackler. He's fundamentally sound in that area. <clears throat> so not worried about him as a run support guy, really. Now, maybe his size could betray him, but it's not going to be for lack of trying. He can get fooled by eye candy and bites hard on fakes. He is a little overly aggressive, I think, which is something he's going to have to maybe work out of his game a little bit. You can trick him with double moves and fakes. Um, he doesn't have play speed the way he had combine speed. I don't think he plays as fast on tape as he played, as he, I mean, ran at the combine. So you have to be a little bit wary of that. I feel like speedster receivers can burn him, and there's not much he can do about it, so you do have to be a little bit cautious with leaving him in man. And while he is a good tackler and good in run support, he doesn't shed blockers the way you would like, which, in fairness, most of these cornerbacks don't, but he's not going to be able to weave through blockers to like stop a screen pass or anything like that. And at the end of the day, he is a little undersized. So we have to ask ourselves, is this going to be a slot-only player in the NFL? That's very possible. Uh, plenty of guys just don't have the size to play on the outside, so they move inside permanently. Maybe DJ James will be that. 175 is pushing it. Feels like he gets distracted by watching the backfield sometimes as well. A little bit of an issue with his game. So DJ James definitely bringing nice things to the table here, but I'm concerned about the size crippling his value. But the... Things that he has that do not go away just because he's playing in the slot, like the ball skills and the smarts and the awareness, those do not go away. And that should continue to make him at least somewhat desirable. So I would say fourth round seems right. So I think that the aggregate gets things about right here. Uh, fourth round pick, somewhere in the middle of the fourth, maybe I'd bump him down a little bit from 105, but not significantly so. So yeah, seems about right to me. Kalen Carson of Wake Forest is our next guy here. Um, 22 years old, 6 feet tall, 199. We have a bigger guy here, almost 200 pounds, basically 200 pounds. 31 and 3 eighths arms, 8 and a quarter hands, so workable, all workable. <coughs> Baby hands, though. We don't love it. Uh, CBS has him way down in the 7th. Walter has him in the 5th. ESPN has him in the 4th, and so does PFF. So the aggregate puts him in about the fourth. So should be somewhere around there. Day three guy. Um, one year of significant production, 42 tackles, eight passes defensed. Uh, the previous year he was pretty good as well, but wasn't nearly as prolific of a player. I think he played a lot fewer snaps, if I recall. So he plays with a tenacious edge to him. He plays with a lot of fire, desire. He plays with high effort. He's a high effort player. 
That's the thing that I think stands out the most about him. He's got a lot of passion, a lot of physicality, a lot of drive. He's got the smarts to play in zone. If you put him in those situations where he gets to read plays happening in front of him, I think he's going to do well. And his click and close is good. When he transitions from his back pedal to his sprint up to go downhill, it's good. He fights at the catch point to dislodge the ball. Um, really good at making sure that the receiver has a heck of a time making a contested catch. He mirrors receivers well when he's put in man coverage as well. He's got the athletic uh, flexibility to hold up there. His hip flipping is very fluid. I really like um, the way he transitions from being a back peddler to a runner. And unlike a lot of guys in this draft, he's got legitimate size. He can play on the outside and it's not, it, it, it works. Like it should work on the outside in the NFL. A lot of these guys, I don't know so much about it. It's a uh, reach, but this guy, I don't think it's a reach, even though his arms aren't super long. Now, no interceptions in two years. He's had interceptions, but they're from 2021 and before. He doesn't really turn and play the ball that well. He tends to play the receiver, which is probably going to attract penalties. So the ball skills are not everything they need to be. Needs to learn how to turn around and play the ball so he doesn't get those penalties. And while I think his size is good, I do wonder if his shorter arms are going to lead to him moving into the slot full-time in the NFL. It's at least possible. I think that he has a better chance than most of these guys but short-armed players typically don't do as well outside. You want them on the inside, where that doesn't matter nearly as much. So, I'm not sure what he's going to be able to do in the NFL because of the size. And he doesn't really have ball skills. I know he has 15 passes defensed, which is pretty good, but he doesn't really have the ball skills that you want. There is some potential here. He's passionate, he's got fire, he's versatile. He can do a few different things for you. I'm sure he'll be a valuable player at some level, but I'm a little bit concerned about this one. I'm waiting until the fifth round on this one. I'm bumping him down a little bit personally. Not really into Kalen Carson, just not really feeling it. So that's what I got on Kalen Carson. We got one more guy in this video. Um, Renardo Green. Renardo Green of Florida State, the Seminoles. Uh, I believe one of two corners in this draft from Florida State. Six feet tall, 186 pounds, so a little bit lanky, but he's got decent size, actually. 31 and a quarter arms, nine and an eighth hands. Testing was more good than bad, for sure. He was a little bit on the slower side with his 40, but the 10-yard split was a little above average. The vert was good. The broad was really good. He almost jumped 11 feet. So we do have some... Pretty nice um, results here from Renardo Green, but um, the, the speed is a concern. Uh, big boards, third round, uh, fourth round, we got a fifth round, so a little bit all over in that area. Aggregate puts him right near the front of the fourth round. Um, over the last two years, he's got about 100 tackles, five and a half for loss, half a sack, only one pick, but he's got a lot of plays on the ball. 2023, he had 13 passes defensed building on five the previous year. And a PFF grade went up almost 10 points, so <clears throat> making progress, improving. And the thing about Renardo Green that should be intriguing people the most would be his flexibility. He can play man, he can play zone, he's got the skills to do both those things. He can play outside or in the slot, he can play press or off man, and he can do it all pretty darn well, I think. So this guy's kind of a jack of all trades, and sometimes that's an insult. I don't think it's an insult with Renardo Green. I think that he's good at all of these things. He's got reactive athleticism to play man. He's got awareness to play zone. He's got the size to play, or at least a decent chunk of the size that you need to play outside. He's got the quickness to play slot and explosiveness, the, the uh, burst to play slot. He's got the strength and the general know-how to play press. He's got the click and close to play off. It's it's a really well-rounded player. He's good at reading and diagnosing plays. He's a smart player. He reads things well. His click and close skills are good, like I said. He's a good tackler and a blitzer as well. He's um, somebody who's going to be a plus in run support for you. And he's very explosive. So I like a lot of things with Renardo Green. Now... 
I do think that his physical style of play will probably draw P.I. calls in the NFL. He doesn't have a ton of interception production to talk about. Last two years has won. So that's definitely something that um, some people are going to have to try to figure out to unlock because it's not like his ball skills are bad. Um, and he's a little too eager with his press. Sometimes he gets over aggressive and trying to jam and the receiver can just like stack him by getting right behind him if he misses. So a little bit overzealous sometimes and that leads to him getting beat. But there's a lot of stuff to really like here. Um, he's really, really well-rounded. I think he can do a little bit of everything. And the issues that he has are fixable. These should be fixable by good coaching. So I'm into Renardo Green quite a bit. I definitely would put him in the third round, maybe even the early third round. I don't know. I think this guy's getting slept on a little bit. I'm not sure what I'm missing here. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to not like here. Maybe he's 26 years old and he's is what he is and he's not going to get better at these things. But why not? Why wouldn't he be better than this in a... Uh, in, in just a short couple of uh, short couple of years. All right, so that's my three guys to start off the day three discussion. I will be seeing you guys soon with more day three guys at cornerback. Just a little bit more to get through, guys. We're almost done. See you guys later. Go Hawks.